Roger once again, Mud Foster University. Today, going to try to understand the age of the universe. Here, we're looking at a, uh, a site called uh, www.skyandtelescope.com, and they are talking about what is the age of the universe. And and I said, well, let's see what they have to say. This is 13.77 billion years. Well, how do they come up with that? Guess how they come up with everything? Take a guess. Are you guessing? All right, I can tell you how to come up with it. The speed of light, Einstein, which is totally bogus, absolutely nonsense. Secondarily, they come up with the fact that it had to be a big bang because everything is speeding away from everything else, which is also based on the speed of light, which it is not because everything simply slowing down. The speed of light is not consistent. It is it's slowing down. It's not everything speeding away. So every time they come up with a further distant telescope, they come up with a further distance that we are, <laughs> our universe is. It's all based on how fast this light travels in, in, uh, by Einstein's theory, which is it's just absolute nonsense. Secondarily, they base their theory of dead dust on this. All right, now Big Bang is based on the fact that all of this, what you're looking at right here, which is what happens inside of a cell, only a single cell, all of this happened by accident, by little molecules bumping against each other after a Big Bang of dead dust from nothing. It all happened and exploded out, and then it all put itself right in nice little places and universes and galaxies and clusters and, and, and planets and solar systems and then all of this just happens by accident. Now, I would say that that's not a very strong scientific um, position. <laughs> I mean, it's like saying, well, yep, there it is. <laughs> it just happened. Well, I agree, it just happened, but I don't think this happened by accident. I don't think this is just bumping dust and a couple sparks here and there, a little methane and a little twist here and a twist here. <laughs> no. So, let's get real with what's going on and start to, you know, let's confront academia because they've, they've been the bullies here. They're the bullies. Uh, you know, they go, oh, you can't talk about God, you can't talk about creation, you can't talk about this, you can't talk. Well, I can tell you one thing right now. I have done my homework. They have not done theirs. They need to study mud fossils and get some mud fossil eyes. And then maybe they can see beyond their own arrogance. Because right now, their status and their pride is ruining students' lives and putting them in debt. And they are fiduciaries to these students. It's their obligation to confront this and to either destroy the evidence that I have presented or to begin to assimilate it into their teaching. I understand it's a process. I'm not saying they have to t accept it in instantaneously, but to avoid it and ignore it and dismiss it and to refuse it with, with prejudice is not the way of their profession. That's my statement. I think it's very clear. It's a very understandable statement. And I don't see how anybody can dispute that. If they're professing to be professors and to be the ones that profess to others what they should understand, they have to understand and, and, and be able to learn themselves. And that's not happening. I'm sorry. Just a fact. Okay, you're going to have to come up to or be up here and stay up here and look around in Mud Files University. I am, you know, I'm, I'm sort of holding people to task for what they're saying and I'm presenting evidence and here's evidence right here that Einstein was wrong and in 60 seconds I can show this light can be accelerated it's it's not it's not one speed fits all it can be accelerated and light is is a, a, a magnetic particle that's pulled to earth by the earth's pull the earth is a positive attractive source, extremely positive attractive. Any electrons will try to jump to Earth. Static electricity collects on you. It will jump to Earth. Any electricity, which is negative electrons, will jump from that source to ground, which is Earth. It's a positive attractive source. That means that that's what light does, is it is pulled to the Earth magnetically. It is, that's what light does. Now, it, it does have a frequency, I agree. 
and it, uh, it can be stretched. And I can show you the proof that it can be accelerated and everything else. And here it is right here. In less than, in less than 60 seconds, I prove Einstein wrong. That's light from a red pulse laser. This is that same light now being accelerated into an experimental Venturi accelerator. That is the entire particle beam right there. The concussed wave is just like going through the atmosphere with a jet breaking the sound barrier. These little particles here are concussed white ether particles which are in the air and they are ubiquitous everywhere in the universe. This shows light being accelerated. These are the actual particles. Those particles occupy a space. They are virtually unseen until they concuss and they illuminate. That is plasma. That is ether. That is accelerated light. Einstein was wrong. Alright, there it is. Less than a minute. Now, we, I also have DNA certified evidence that there were giants in the earth. I have them. And I have also the DNA reports. There's three reports in this one single report. And it shows that they were all human mitochondrial DNA. This goes back three years. It was done with all ancient protocols in the best possible sterile conditions. Gloves, mask, you, know, you name it. It was done correctly. And it was dense DNA in two of the three samples because they came directly from the arterial or blood supply. Not from just swabbing them somewhere. The third one, I also took it from an arterial error, but, but it was uh, more dried out. I thought it would be still dense but it was not but um, there was the negative controls were done it was all negative controls were negative and see two of them were dense the other one wasn't as dense in one area but it did have the mitochondrial DNA which there's a hundred base pairs apparently a couple different regions and and which proves what it is and it's a human mitochondrial DNA is 100% no question whatsoever and, and uh, here it is, a homo sapien mitochondrial cytochrome B gene, homo sapien mitochondrial D loop gene, and um, the 1A, whatever these primers are, and so forth. And, and then this shows the CTAGs, the, you know, the, the uh, DNA coding. And, you know, it's, I don't really understand that depth there, but I do understand it's a human mitochondrial DNA. And it was certified as if, um, by this laboratory so it's not and there was two labs involved in it so this is not something that's uh, that's unknown or wrong and so I have ancient DNA of ancient giant human creatures giants I mean very 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 big giants so it's time to have um, a little more examination of the reality and the universe is not expanding the way they're saying the age of the universe is obviously not what they're saying it can't have been expanding and all of a sudden it exceeds the speed of light it's just absolute nonsense it's being pulled on by the distance of where it's coming from but it's not accelerating away by that because it's it's slowing down it's slowing down because it's being pulled on magnetically by the matter that it it, it came from